What's up guys, this is Matt with Shields from Billings and today I want to go through a few of the settings that I personally use with my hummingbirds to find structure in fish and specifically the side imaging settings. Um, right out of the box there's a few things we need to do to our hummingbirds to make them read uh, more efficiently. The first thing we need to do is we need to take them out of the angler mode into the custom mode. That's simply done by going into the menu twice going into the setup menu down here where it says user mode we want to change that from angler into custom and once we do that it removes all of the filters it allows us to adjust our hummingbirds the way that we want them um, once we go that route specifically in the side imaging side of things it comes right out of the box looking at 100 feet left 100 feet right and i strongly recommend us lowering that down to 65 to 70 feet it is just too much information to cram, in this case a 10 inch helix. We want to get dialed in, we want to see the detail, we want to see where the fish are on the structure, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples on why sometimes looking less distance is better. Less is more, okay? So we're going to go into our menu once, we're going to come down to our side imaging range, I'm going to adjust this down to 65. It's going to start giving me a great clean picture. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color palette. Just because I like a certain color palette does not mean that everybody should run that palette. Everybody's eyes are different, so that's why there are 12 different color palettes in the Hummingbird system. Mine is color palette 11. It comes out of the box at color palette 3. Change this over to 11. The main reason why I like color palette 11 is the hard returns come back red. and We've kind of been ingrained throughout the years on our 2D sonar that red return is a hard bottom. So we're going to start with this. Um, I've got it on color palette 11. We have found some structure, specifically an old foundation. We're going to drive over it a couple times, get it dialed in, and uh, go from there. Down here I've got a waypoint saved. I might zoom in a little bit, 50 feet. I'm going to drive right next to that in a straight line so that there is no distortion when my boat is turning on my side imaging. Speed up here to a couple miles an hour. I'm going to see, see I'm running two miles an hour. I'm going to change my chart speed. Comes in the box at 10. I'm going to lower that down to mimic my water speed. So let's say three. That sounds good to me. I'm going to drive around at three miles an hour. You see I've got some hard return here. There's a perfect example of what a foundation looks like. Pretty good picture right out of the gate, but I'm going to show you a trick on how to get that picture to look the best in these conditions. 16 feet of water, driving around at 2 miles an hour. I'm going to stop the chart from scrolling by simply moving the cursor and putting it over on whatever corner I want. Once I've got this chart stopped, I can do all my adjustments right now based off of that structure. I hit the plus button, it zooms it in nice. You can see there's a fish out there on the corner. But there's the foundation, you can see all of the corners. Hit my menu button once. I'm going to jump up into here to the side imaging enhancement, okay? The two most important things when side imaging enhancement is sensitivity and contrast. Okay, we're going to adjust our sensitivity up and down by using the arrow keys. You can see it gets really strong. I'm going to take it down a little bit. That's not bad. So in this case, minus 4 is the sensitivity with color palette 11. Contrast is where we're going to start seeing those nice shadows, the difference between hard and soft bottoms, things along those lines. So that's a pretty good picture from what we found. Minus 4 for the sensitivity. Four for the contrast, not too bad. Looks pretty good. The next thing that we want to do is if I'm going to fish this structure, if I'm going to vertical jig this structure, right, I want to find it again. I want to lay a waypoint down. So because I've got it zoomed in right there, if I hit my mark button twice, it laid another waypoint down. Hit exit, clears the screen. I can go over here. There's a corner, we'll hit waypoint there, take my cursor over, there's another corner, double tap mark for another waypoint, 
go to the other corner, double tap waypoint, go to the other, the end corner, double tap waypoint, and if we go down here on my map, because I've got everything networked, and I zoom in, you can see the rectangle that I've created, and I know that if I go pull bouncers around the rectangle or the square, I'm going to be in the zone the whole time. If I want to go vertical jig, I can spot lock in the dead center of that, that foundation, pitch to the corners. I know there's fish there because I can see them inside of that foundation. All this was done by just using my site imaging and, and making it read the way that we want it to read. It'll do it. We just have to teach it to do it, tell it to do it.